look, I get it. There's a lot of thing about modern day comic books that we are not connecting with, but there's a lot of good stuff still out there. And I want to talk about one of those issues today. Hey there everybody, it's RevKev here. I hope you're having an amazing day today. So I want to talk about Batman Superman issue one that was written by Joshua Williamson and illustrated by David Marquez. Now, I have been a big, 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 big Superman fan for a long time. I have all the Superman comics from 1983 until about 2016, 2017, at some point about midway through the new 52 run. I just was tired of collecting comic books and kind of drifted away from it for a while. Um, and then got back into collecting Superman again when it kind of relaunched under uh, Brian Michael Bendis uh, when he took over writing it. Started buying Superman and Action Comics again and I'm looking at now filling in that two, three year gap of comic books. I didn't read Rebirth and I'm kind of disappointed that I haven't read it yet because it seems like that's what everyone is holding the new Superman stories to. Everyone's comparing it to Rebirth. Everyone loved Rebirth. Everyone loved what they were doing with Superman and Lois Lane and young John Kent. And, um, and Bendis seemed to have come in and just completely scrapped it. So a lot of people complaining. And I get it. I get it. As a die, 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 die hard Superman fan. Die hard Superman fan, okay? I don't show that to too many people, so consider yourself special. Well, of course, Rev Kev would be a Superman fan. Heavenly Father sends his one and only son to Earth, save mankind. Sound familiar? Die Hard Superman fan. I lived through the mullet years, okay? I lived through the blue and the red electric dynamo Superman, okay? I've lived through some horrible, horrible seasons of Superman. Stupid mullet Superman. Red, blue, lightning, energy, suit Superman. So though it might be a little disappointing on where Superman is going as a character for some people, I'm enjoying it because <laughs> I'm comparing it to those days in the 90s and the early 2000s when it was really hurt and bad. So I picked up Batman Superman issue one and honestly most of it I was a little confused about because I haven't been reading comic books uh, over the past number of years. First off with the character of the Batman who laughs. And just as a quick note, spoiler, <laughs> spoiler, there will be spoilers uh, on the story of the, my review here. But the Batman Who Laughed uh, came out uh, quite recently as what would happen when Bruce Wayne falls? What happens if Bruce Wayne becomes the villain? And I'm definitely going back to pick up some of those graphic novels and reading that because holy smokes is this really uh, interesting. You see, as a Superman fan, it's always been kind of the main crux, the main driving force of the story between Batman and Superman is what would Batman do if Superman went bad? That always seemed to be everyone's great fear. What would you do if Superman turned bad? <laughs> now run along so I can break out of here. I've got lots of planning to do to top this. That's enough. I know it's soon, but think you'll ever love again? Maybe you won't kill your next family. But the Batman who laughs is just completely different and just shows a whole different side of what happens when Bruce Wayne, you know, completely falls off the rails. And so great, great, great and interesting character there. And so now seeing the Batman who laughs coming into the main DC universe and infecting other superheroes, and now watching this dynamic between Batman and Superman and now trying to figure out where it's always been Batman worried about Superman turning, now Batman's worried about himself turning because he's seen it and witnessed it and Batman, uh, sorry, Superman is kind of navigating all that. So the story just in the first issue, even though I didn't have a lot to go on in the background, not knowing the background, hooked, hooked, hooked. 
loved it. I thought, I, I just thought, um, chronologically, I thought Williamson's writing was excellent. The contrast between the character of Superman and Batman, I've always loved that. And so I thought he did a great job of bringing those two relationships together really well. And, um, and the artwork, always a Marquez, his artwork is absolutely beautiful. I think he just captures both characters so incredibly well. And, um, and again, spoiler, when it kind of finished that, you know, a number of superheroes have been infected by this virus that turned Bruce Wayne into the Batman who laughs um, and not knowing who it is. And when the first one shows up and it being Billy Baxton leading into the Shazam who laughs, like <laughs> Superman, now, Batman and Superman and Shazam are the only DC comics, are actually the only comic books I'm collecting right now, and I heard DC, Shazam is ending. Oh, I was loving the Shazam run. Another video for another time. But uh, finishing it off and now leading into issue two where you know Superman's weakness to magic and just how incredibly powerful Shazam is, I think this is going to be amazing, and I'm really looking forward to seeing where this series is going. For me, I am giving this issue a big, big, big... Four and a half stars. Doesn't get much better for a comic book for me. Um, yeah, I don't know what would have pushed it over to a five. Maybe if it uh, was a little bit bigger and there was a little bit more meat to the story, I would have given it a five. But uh, great, great comic book. And as always, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on it. Uh, put it in the comment below. Thank you for liking and sharing the videos. Thank you for subscribing. We've hit over 325 subscribers on the channel. I'm so thrilled about that. And I look forward to uh, geeking out with you a little bit more in the future through these videos. Take care, God bless, and we will talk to you soon.